Hi, I'm Damien Wills, Chief Pilot and owner of GoFly Aviation, and welcome to today's GoFly Tips. Today we're going to be looking at partial engine failures. Most students have been taught how to deal with actual real full engine failure, but it's the insidious partial engine failure that can cause a lot of issues for a would-be pilot or student. So we're going to take Stephen, who's already got his pilot certificate, up for a fly as a bit of a refresher on emergency training, and look at the partial engine failure. Now we're going to simulate a uh, partial engine failure, so we're on takeoff, and we're about 400 feet AGL. Uh, Calandra here on 05, we have, we've got very little area to, uh, to land, yep. uh, spots to land, we've got a little a road down here in a golf course at the end here, and also we get a partial engine failure, our, our RPM drops to say 5200 RPM. Now it might be very easy to say, oh jeez, you know, what will I do? Well, will I cut the power and just RPM land straight ahead? Yep. To the east inbound to if you don't know the capabilities of your aircraft, you know, you're not going to know which decision to make. So the first yeah. thing is know your aircraft's capabilities. Yeah. So at the moment we're at 4,100 RPM. I know I can actually land, I can actually still fly level at this height. Yep. I could do a 180 degree turn, keep level. Yep. Still a bit high on the ground out to my right. So I'm going to turn right. I've still got landing areas below me. Yep. And turn around. Got, yep. And you've also got beach out there as I've well. I've got beach there really as well needed. if I needed it. Power's still there. And I could land on either... 2, 3 or 3, 0 at the moment. Yeah. Okay, we're just going to break away from circuit for a bit. But the fact is I've been instructing on the sling aircraft for a long time, so I know the capabilities yeah. of the aircraft. So when someone says you should treat a, a partial engine failure as a real engine failure, that's not always correct. If you've taken off in a highly wooded area or a highly populated area and you, don't, you have a partial and you still have enough power to get around for a circuit and land, that's probably the best option. Yeah. However, if you're not delivering sufficient RPM to, to maintain level flight, treat it as a real engine failure. Yeah. So the only way to know that is to actually go and fly your aircraft at different power settings to understand whether you can maintain level flight at that power setting. Yeah. So we're just going to break away from the circuit right now. We're going to level off here. So we're going to go back to 4,000 RPM, which is what I did before, and just see if we can comfortably maintain slow, sleep, slow speed flight at 4,000 RPM. So you can fly the plane now. I have control. You have control, Stephen. And, okay, so keep it level for me, 4,000 RPM, and see if you can comfortably fly it around. Do a bit of a, uh, a gentle to medium level turn for me to the right. To the right, clear my left, clear center, clear above, clear right, clear behind. And you certainly can. Certainly can. So we know at 4,000 RPM, we can comfortably maintain level, level uh, Flight in the sling. Now, so let's see if we can go to a climb then. Comfortably going to a climb, but let's just try 65 knots, which would be sort of the minimum. Actually, we'll go 60. That's, that's the, probably the, the safest legal minimum speed we want to use in the sling. So, let's okay. see if we can do a, a climb at 4,000 RPM. We've got quite a bit of fuel on, we've got two heavy p people on board. Let's see if it'll maintain a climb at 4,000 RPM. Yeah, it doesn't really want to climb at 4,000 RPM, does oh, it? Oh, we've got about, oh, it's maybe 100 to 150 feet per minute, so we can very, very slowly, slowly climb. So, what I'm seeing now is that 4,000 looks about our absolute minimum we'd want to be able to keep it flying to get around for a circuit to land again if we yeah. had a partial engine failure. Just to humour ourselves, let's have a look at what happened if we, if we had a partial engine failure down to about 3,000. 400 RPM, and I want you to keep it, or 3,300 let's say, I want you to keep it le level and see if we can comfortably fly around. You got, you're descending now, so I can't get back to level flight, so trim for level. Yeah, we can see our airspeed's decreasing. Yeah, that's right. So, you could have assisted you could use the that partial engine failure to assist it's to get, you to get to a field. To get to a field. Yeah. yeah. But we certainly we can't really comfortably maintain. See, at the moment you're sort of descending at 400 feet a minute. Yeah. Let's just retrim that a bit. Uh, adjust our attitude for level. See, look at that. We're maintaining level height at about 60 knots, and that's you know that's variable plus or minus five knots. So not really a safe speed no, to be not. flying around. So in the sling aircraft, we're going to use our arm control. We're going to use our minimum power setting for partial power as 4,000 RPM. So anything under 4,000 RPM, uh, we're going to pick a field and land, or treat it as a real engine fire, power back and land as normal. Yeah. Above 4,000, we have the option of, of 
maintaining level height and getting back to our preferred runway. Okay, we're joining crosswind, I've got the power. And all of a sudden we start to experience a partial engine failure. Engine starts playing up, we go to 4,000 RPM, what are you going to do? First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to trim for 70 knots, best glide speed. Well, you can still maintain height, we know yeah. we can still maintain height at, at 4,000 RPM. So yeah, that's right. You would want to go 70 knots straight away, you want to maintain your height. Yep. Still make it a tight circuit. Be in my right centre, above, left and behind. Just in case your engine does fail. Yeah. So you're turning on the downwind now, all of a sudden, oh, our power starts decreasing again. Partial engine fire, we start decreasing, oh, it's now gone to 3,000 RPM, so what are you going to do now? Well, now I'm cheating it like a real engine failure, and yep. I'm going to 70 knots, best glide speed straight away. Good. I'm going to trim for 70 knots. Yep. And uh, basically, we will conduct our, um, our Mayday circuit calls. Yep. Okay, so we've got 3,000 RPM again. We do have an aircraft in circuit here, so we'll see how good your flying is right now. Um, I'm going to keep that power on at 3000 and just slot in behind this aircraft and conduct an emergency landing. I'll give the call so you just fly. Okay. Yep, start turning your base now. Right, center of the line. We've got the airport building, Yaki, the close high base, uh, 06, and we'll be for an auto rotation stop and go to traffic culture. Right, Derek Sling, 8658, turning base from way uh, 05, number 2, touch and go, Calandra. Get that flap and flap for stage one down. Yep, good. So don't go too fast with the flap because remember we've got a partial engine failure. Yep. So for instance, I, you could be on base with this partial and all of a sudden, whack, there goes all my power. Yeah. I've had a real engine failure now, I've got nothing left. So always make it tighter than you would normally. Yeah. We can see we've got a bit of wind today so we don't get too far away. And there we go, we'd see we'd make it into that field we there. We sure would. Yep. Okay, full flap. Thanks again for joining me on GoFly Tips. Stephen and I had a lot of fun then filming that. As it comes to partial engine failures, remember they are insidious. Know the limitations of your aircraft and have a minimum RPM that if it falls below that RPM, you're going to treat it as a real engine failure. Happy and safe flying and see you next time.